Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President, and I uh, join with other senators in expressing my condolences to those who have been impacted by these uh, tragic events, these bushfires across Australia this summer, uh, starting with those who so sadly have lost loved ones, uh, those people who went into this summer not expecting to lose a loved family member or a friend, a relative of some description. Uh, it's a terrible event and a terrible reminder of how much impact these events can have on us as a nation, but also to express my sympathies to those Australians who've lost their homes, who've lost their communities and perhaps also lost their livelihoods uh, through damage to property. Uh, there's no denying that communities across our country, through uh, many of the mainland states, have been hit exceptionally hard, uh, and it will take a great amount of time for these communities to rebuild uh, and to grow into the future. But the key message I wanted to um, provide today uh, in expressing my sympathies and condolences to those affected is that we are here with you. And that is something that I think uh, applies to all of us in this place, regardless of political persuasion and across both chambers of this parliament. And we will support you, those who are affected by bushfires, as these communities, these families, these individuals rebuild their lives uh, and get through the, no doubt, tough times that lie ahead. And that's what's important now, that we as a country, as we traditionally have uh, in times where tragedy has struck, on the micro, the macro, on the national level, we band together as we regroup and we rebuild for the future. And that's what our focus should be, and certainly from my point of view, that's what my focus is. Australians expect that from us, and that's what I hope we deliver as a parliament, as a government, as individual senators and as members of communities. The measures uh, that have been announced, unprecedented support from the Commonwealth Government following these bushfires, uh, go directly to that, to the heart of what's needed by these communities as they face the task of recovering and rebuilding. The initial uh, support package uh, outlined as by the Prime Minister uh, in weeks past of $2 billion which will support families and individuals who have been impacted by these terrible events uh, through the Department of Social Services, support for our vital uh, primary production industries, including fisheries and forestry, uh, two industries I have a particular interest in, given my uh, portfolio responsibilities, uh, but incredible job generators and uh, economic activity generators in regional communities that have been hit hard by these bushfires but also support for businesses. Um, the, the loans and grants that have been announced to help businesses with the short-term hit that these bushfires have caused them as they go about their business. It's important that we support uh, these sectors so that we can help communities continue to tick over while they uh, assess their damage, uh, look to rebuild, regroup and grow into the future. And of course, as the Assistant Minister for Fisheries and Forestry and uh, also Regional Tourism, I have been working with uh, affected industries, starting with the tourism industry. Um, right across the country, we've been engaging directly with uh, stakeholders and business operators that are in affected regions, hearing from them about exactly what they need. And I do want to acknowledge the very fine work of Tourism Australia and Austrade, the two Australian government agencies uh, responsible for tourism in this country, who have snapped into gear in an amazing way, working with states and territories and also regional tourism organisations and businesses directly, to do what they can to ensure that the measures put in place by the Commonwealth in partnership with states and territories go some way to dealing with the issues that flow from a bushfire. Uh, the Minister for Tourism, Simon Birmingham, my colleague, announced the $76 million uh, support package for the tourism industry. Uh, which, of course, uh, on an international level, uh, promotes Australia as still open for business. We all know that there was a great deal of media coverage highlighting uh, the bushfires uh, overseas, and the imagery is um, nothing short of scary. And we know uh, from the uh, reports provided back to us by the tourism industry that people were making decisions not to come to Australia for fear uh, that they may be affected by the fires. So uh, the international marketing campaign uh, in our key markets, I hope, will go some way to supporting those businesses who have been affected. And of course, as the Prime Minister 
said uh, when he was visiting Kangaroo Island, for those who have got bookings, who are looking for a refund, give these businesses a break. They're not big multinationals, they're small businesses with limited cash flow, and we need to remember that as we work to support them. Of course, the promotion campaign is also a domestic one. Uh, holiday here this year, which has been referred to in a number of contributions to this debate. It's important that those who aren't in bushfire-affected communities consider going and spending their money and their time in these communities that have been affected. Uh, those dollars spent in those communities will go a long way to helping those communi communities get back on their feet and remain resilient into the future. One in 13 Australians works in the tourism industry. It generates billions of dollars of economic activity. Uh, and this package, this $76 million, I hope goes some way uh, to helping that industry continue to be the contributor it is, particularly uh, in our regional communities. Of course, there is the funding for the events uh, and attraction developments in regional communities. Uh, the Tasmanian experience of the 2018-19 summer, where the Huon Valley, a community south of Hobart, was hit by some pretty severe bushfires. Uh, in partnership with the State of Tasmania, the Commonwealth provided around $1.5 million to develop a tourism attraction. Uh, that program is rolling out and that has had a benefit for that community when other tourism attractions were lost. And so the $10 million that was announced as part of this $76 million will go some way where we can work uh, directly with communities to understand what it is they need to bring visitors back in so that they, as I said before, can spend their money. And uh, of course, all of this comes at a time when the tourism biz uh, industry would be at its busiest, summer. The bookings lost uh, are going to have a significant impact for these small to medium businesses moving forward. The forestry industry obviously has been one of the hardest hit industries out of the bushfires. Um, we only have to uh, look at some of the stats, which I'll run through in a minute, to understand the scale of the problem faced by the forest industry, but one I hope we can find a way to overcome. Uh, the impact, too, will last for decades. Trees don't take a couple of years to grow. They take 30 years to grow in the case of a, a radiata pine, which is one of our uh, most prolific plantation trees. Uh, looking at New South Wales, in the Tumut -tumba Tumbarumba region, in the Southwest Slopes Forestry Hub, over 58,000 hectares of productive forests have been burnt which is about 40 per cent of their harvestable resource. That's on the way to half of the trees they had there in their resources uh, available for harvesting over the next few decades. Um, the Eden Mill uh, was damaged, the ANWE Mill has been damaged. Of course, those things can be repaired and I hope that that will be the case. In the north coast of New South Wales, uh, the timber mill at Wyne was destroyed and of course we saw plantation damage there. In East Gippsland, we've had considerable damage and loss to hundreds of thousands of hectares of forest, and we don't even have a proper quantified statistic on that yet, because our state and territory colleagues are still assessing the damage and still trying to put out these fires. Um, in South Australia, as was mentioned by Senator Anne Rustin a little earlier on, Kangaroo Island lost 95 per cent of its trees, uh, valued at nearly a billion dollars. This is a significant impact and uh, paints just how much work we have to do in partnership with our state and territory colleagues and the industry to make sure that we help this industry grow into the future. Thousands of jobs in regional communities um, depend on this industry. Tumut alone, 5,000 direct and indirect jobs in a small community of around 8,000 Australians. 5,000 of those people are dependent on this industry. So we look forward to working with them to make sure that we can replant these trees and, of course, uh, reach our target of planting an extra billion trees. We do need to consider things when it comes to resilience and rebuilding for the future, like fuel reduction. Now, it's not a silver bullet, as some have uh, tried to claim uh, it's being promoted as, but it is a measure that needs to be considered when thinking how we can tackle and minimise the impact or the risk, rather, uh, that of bushfires occurring into the future. The Chief Fire Officer of the Tasmanian Fire Service in a briefing earlier this year stated that given the uh, fuel reduction work that's occurred since the year 2014, Tasmania has a 25 per cent lower risk of bushfires occurring. And that is something we need to bear in mind. And uh, as we do talk about action on climate and doing things to minimise our emissions, fuel reduction in forests, be it mechanical or uh, low intensity burns are some of those measures we should be considering as real climate action. I conclude by acknowledging uh, that Australian people are a resilient people. 
and uh, people that get up and make the best of a situation and work hard to rebuild, uh, to improve uh, the situation for the future. I want to pay tribute to the tens of thousands of fire volunteers and, of course, uh, paid fire personnel across the country from the various agencies they uh, work for, uh, but also Aust Australian Defence Force personnel and reserves who have done an amazing job right across the nation in supporting our communities. Uh, I think it's important to note uh, point nine of the condolence motion we're considering today that the Senate commits itself to learning any lessons from this fire season. And I think that's exactly what we need to be doing. And uh, I look forward to continuing to work with communities, the industries I represent as an assistant minister in this place. And as I say, my message is we can and we will rebuild and we are with you.